I'm Tammy, and this is Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like our mamas did. This mama used to make these all the time when Chris was working and the kids were in school. And I'm going to tell you, they loved them so much, they wouldn't care if I made them every night. So we're going to get started, and you're going to see at the end how much Chris loves these things. This is a super easy recipe. You need a bag. I'd usually use a gallon size, but I'm out. So I'm using a crock pot bag uh, to shake my chicken up in. But you're gonna take a sheet pan and you're going to line it with some foil for easy cleanup, just like that. This recipe is in our second cookbook. I used to make this recipe for my kids. It came out of a kid cookbook. And they loved it. All right. So um, these have flour and butter on them. You can make this recipe in the air fryer as well. So um, however you want to make it's fine. Just put it on the chicken um, setting in your air fryer. But in order to make these in an oven, we're going to bake these today at 425 degrees for one hour. All right. So we got our chicken legs. I'm gonna use a cup of flour, and this is just all-purpose flour. So if you use a self-rising flour, just reduce the salt in this recipe to half. We're gonna use two teaspoons of salt. One, two. We're gonna use a half teaspoon of pepper, black pepper, and just one teaspoon of paprika. Just regular paprika. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to shake this up in here. Get it mixed up good. Now you're going to take some room temperature butter, and it's cold in here today, but I hope it'll still spread. And you're going to want your chicken legs to be clean and dry, or this butter is not going to stick to them. So my recommendation is don't wash them. Let them be fresh right out of the package and sit them out at room temperature for about an hour. And then you're gonna take this butter and you're gonna take a lot of it and you're just gonna rub it on your hands. Get it nice and thick on your hands. And uh, of course you can use margarine if that's what you're buying. This butter is expensive right now. And you're just gonna take these chicken legs and you're gonna rub them down good with this butter. Now, you're not going to reuse this butter because you're rubbing the raw chicken with it, okay? So, just set out enough to use. No more, no less, okay? You want to use a little bit at a time so you don't waste your butter. But what's good is this helps that flour cling to the chicken, and the butter helps the flour wet, get wet a little bit, uh, so that it doesn't look as powdery. Now, these are going to have some spots where the flour's thicker when they come out of the oven that look a little powdery, okay? So it's not going to look real crunchy, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to be real good. These have a really good flavor, just like the recipe. So like I said, the only thing that you might do different is use some self-rising flour, and if you do, make sure you uh, use... Just one teaspoon of salt instead of two teaspoons. And really try to get a lot of butter on them. Now, if you've got one that's sat here a minute and it's not quite as dry as you want it to be on the bottom, get you some paper towels and have them handy so that you can dry it. Because see how that butter's rubbing on there now? It wouldn't do in there bef that before. So just make sure your butter is getting on them good. And now we're going to get them in this flour and coat them. Okay, so I've still got Dirty hands, you may as well, there ain't no sense in washing them, and we're just going to throw all this stuff away. And I'm going to put this chicken down in here. Now, you can shake the chicken if you want to, um, but the way this thing is done, I'm, I'm just going to roll it, okay? Now, you can throw your chicken in there and shake it, like I said, if you want to, but you can just move it around and make sure you got plenty of flour on it. And it's not a double coat, it's just a single coat. And it probably wouldn't hurt to shake off the excess, and that way it won't look as powdery when it's done. But you gotta do it pretty quick. Now, if you don't let your chicken sit out an hour before you start this, 
your butter is going to get so doggone hard on that chicken so fast, it may not adhere to the flour good. So make sure you do, um, you know, not get them out of the right out of the refrigerator and coat them with this butter because the butter gets hard as it gets cold. Now this is going to bake at 425 degrees for an hour. And this is, this one's a really big chicken leg. The juices have to run clear. So since that one is so doggone big, I'm definitely going to put it on the outside of the baking dish and towards the back. Okay. All refrigerators are coldest in the back. All ovens are hottest in the back. All right. So your oven's going to be hotter in the back. So use your largest chicken legs and put them on one side of the pan and your smaller ones along the other side. And your oven is really hot towards the back. So you're going to want these big fat ones in the back of the oven and the smaller ones along the front side of the oven. All right. And all ovens are pretty much the same when it comes to that. Now these are going to cook at 425 degrees, which is pretty hot because you do want them to get nice and crunchy and brown. And we're going to slide these in here. Now, if you have a convection oven, you're going to want to turn that down to 375 degrees and turn your convection on, all right, um, and cook it for an hour. If you don't have convection, they're going to be 425 for an hour. If you want to use the Kasori air fryer, I'm going to show you a setting on the Kasori, and I don't know if you've got a different brand. You'll just have to look in the manual. But on the Kasori, they have a chicken leg setting. That's what you would use, okay? So if you're going to use the air fryer, use the chicken leg setting. And I'll go ahead and tell you with the air fryer and with this, you may want to pull them out about 20 minutes before the cook time's over. In the air fryer, 10 minutes. In the oven, 20 minutes. And spray them good with some cooking spray. And that'll also keep them from looking powdery from the flour. All right, we'll see you in an hour. I'm going to show y'all what I'm making for sides for dinner. I have got some frozen lima beans. I put some butter in here and I put a little bit of chicken bouillon granules with some water and they're just cooking on the back burner on low. So we're going to have those. And then I am just boiling up some potatoes and I'm going to make some good old cream, what we call cream potatoes because I whip them with the mixer and make them nice and fluffy. And you may call them mashed potatoes, but either way, it's going to be a delicious supper. All righty, it's been a while. So we're going to get these suckers out of here and enjoy our supper. And while they're cooling down a little bit, I'm going to cream my potatoes. Now, I didn't spray these with oil. They look just like they did coming out of the oven. So you can tell there's a little bit of a powdery look to them but not a lot. And I'm going to show you the difference if you spray them. So I'm going to spray one and just show you what I'm talking about. You could just, I'll spray the little ones. And I usually cream them in my sink because lots of times they'll splatter. When I put in butter, you can put in sour cream or milk or both. It's up to you. Salt and pepper as well. And I made enough potatoes so that I would have leftovers. And that way, the next time I cook a dinner, if I want creamed potatoes, I don't have to make them again because they do really well in the refrigerator. And I will be honest with you. Um, they do better if you don't put sour cream in them if you're wanting to use them as leftovers. They just don't warm up as good with sour cream. If you're making them and you're going to eat them that evening and you're not going to have them for leftovers, go ahead and put a little sour cream in there and make them delicious. I just add my milk a little at a time. until they're what I call creamy.
good thing too is you want to use a stainless steel pot when you're making cream potatoes. If you're going to be using a mixer, you don't want to use a, a nonstick pot because you can't mix up your potatoes in the pot you cook them in um, if it's a nonstick. So make sure you grab a stainless steel pot um, so that you can mix them up in the same pot and you don't have to get something else dirty. Okay, our peas are ready. And I'm going to make a supply. Now these uh, chicken legs might stick a little bit to the bottom. So if you've got parchment, you can always use parchment. I used... Um, I use the foil because that's what I tell you to use in the recipe book. Once they start cooling down, they kind of loosen up from the bottom more. But you can see that they kind of want to cling to the bottom. If they were on parchment, they wouldn't do that at all. Okay. So we're going to grab a couple of legs. Make us a plate. I'll put some peas on it. I love green lima beans. They're not peas, they're limas. And some cream potatoes. There's our delicious dinner. And I'm going to let Chris taste this for y'all because he's the big chicken leg man. All right, here it is. Every time I came home from work, Tammy had these done because the kids, uh, they... Could never, well, you could have made these every single night. For me, too. It's so tender. It's just good. Can't beat salt, pepper, and paprika. And it's not fried. Right. So. But it does have butter on it, but still. <laughs> That's good. We love that. Yes, I and can't you wait. still love it, don't you, baby? Yeah, I'm ready to eat. I'm going to taste these limas, because I ain't had them in a while. And it's just simple. Just simple cooking, simple ingredients. Mm -hmm. Limas cooked like that, to me, are so much better than the ones I get out in public. They put all kind of herbs and spices and stuff in them. And I'm going to tell you, these lima beans... It's like heaven to me. Just a little bit of chicken granules and some butter. That's all it takes. All right. And I'm going to taste this chicken too, I guess. It's the tender. It's like it's been pressure cooked or something. It's so good, y'all. Y'all are going to love it. So we're going to see you next time here at Colored Valley Cooks. And I hope you get on that computer, go to our website and buy a cookbook today. This one's in the second one. We'll see you next time. Love you. Bye. Getting dinner done